Hello and welcome to EPG Partshala. This is uh, Professor Srinivas Reddy, former professor of uh, public administration, Kakti University, Warangal, Telangana State. Today we will be discussing about uh, one of the very fascinating thinkers of public administration, namely Mary Parker Follett. Mary Parker Follett has the singular distinction of being perhaps the only female administrative thinker. Perhaps Lillian Gilbert also has made her own little contribution, but she is considered to be one of the major contributors to the thought process in the subjects of public administration and management. In this lecture, we shall cover three aspects relating to Mary Parker Follett. The first is about her bio sketch or uh, bio data as to what's her, what are her details, personal details and educational details. The second is the major ideas of Mary Parker Follett. And lastly, a very kind of critical evaluation of the contributions of Mary Parker Follett. We'll start with the bio date of Mary Parker Follett. Mary Parker Follett was born in the year 1969, 1869 and died in the year 1933. She was one of those management experts who took keen interest in social administration and social work. Now this is a rarity. Most of the thinkers in administration, the early thinkers on administration and management have either hailed from mechanical engineering background or business background. She has had experience in vocational guidance and she was one of the earliest to shift the focus of management and administrative studies from subjects such as state and community to business. Major works of Mary Parker Follett are number one, the Speaker of the House of Representatives. Second, uh, this was published in the year 1896. The New State published in the year 1920. And one of the mo more important works, Creative Experience published in the year 1924. Dynamic Administration, which is actually a collection of works authored by Mary Parker Follett, but edited by Metcalf and Urwick. And this was the, the book's name is Dynamic Administration, published in the year 1941. Coming to her major ideas, Mary Parker Follett's chief ideas are number one, the concept of constructive conflict. Secondly, the concept of power, authority and control. Thirdly, the concept of coordination. And finally, the concept of leadership. We'll have a discussion of uh, Mary Parker Follett's basic contributions, starting with the concept of constructive conflict. Generally, it is assumed that conflict is destructive. And most of the managers or administrators think that conflicts have to be avoided at all costs. And they get worried if there are ever some conflicts in the organization and conflicts are perennial in every organization and more so in public organizations. Follett says that conflicts are only but natural. Conflicts are all not destructive. In fact, she is of the opinion that conflicts bring to the fore the contending ideas on some particular problem. Generally, in human life, we tend to overstate one side of the issue. Every development, every phenomena has two sides, both the positive and negative. Depending on our own particular position, we try to justify one-sidedly whether it is useful or harmful. But Mary Parker Follett says that conflicts are inevitable and conflicts are also useful. Now this is where she says that some of the conflicts can be constructive. Now just to take a small example from our day-to-day -day life. Say for example, there is a village 
in which there are two contending groups or two leaders are vying for the position of let's say sarpanch of the village or the mukhi of the village now in the election both sides will articulate their viewpoints they will talk about issues of development arguments and counter arguments will come and these things will have the effect of educating the ordinary people they will get to see both sides of the problem and therefore this is a very important way important condition for taking a proper step so this is how she defends conflicts as a natural condition and also inevitable condition and also in a sense conflicts are not really bad and maybe a situation where there is no conflict is something uh, perhaps indicating the ill health of the organization Follett goes further and says that there are three ways in which in an administrative organization the conflicts are resolved and these three these are the general ways maybe there are ever so many ways of resolving conflicts but basically all of them would be falling into the following three types one of them is domination the second is compromise and the third is integration domination here means that if there is a conflict there are always two sides to the conflict conflict will not arise unless there are two contending sides now uh, between the two sides or among the two sides there is one side or one group one individual who is very dominant maybe the dominance is because of his high level of articulation maybe his higher level of information insight or physical power or money power or whatever kind of power one has or the group has they tend to dominate and win the conflict in their favor now in the resolution method the first method of resolution which is through domination the conflict gets resolved the victor or the winner will have the pride and will have his way the loser will be very uncomfortable he would be always looking for opportunities to take it back whenever it is possible he or she would wait for his or her time to just make good the loss one has suffered really or imaginative so therefore the losing side looks for reward or some reassertion at some particular opportune time and therefore there is a kind of bad blood in the organization no there is one side and if it is two individuals okay perhaps the damage is less if it is at the lower levels if the individuals are at the higher level the damage is much more and it will be even more if it is between groups so large number of people are dissatisfied maybe some people are satisfied and it's not necessary that the group that is dominating is always in the majority it's also possible that the winning group may be in minority and majority are uh, unaid with the kind of solution that is given to them so therefore this has to be avoided uh, to the extent possible maybe you cannot forestall all occasions when conflicts get resolved through domination also okay we look at the second important possibility of resolving or solving the conflicts this is compromise now i think uh, the whole life in fact i am reminded of the saying that marriage is a compromise i think a man and woman uh, can live together uh, only by compromising to their uh, mutual dispositions temperaments and demands and all that if these things don't happen marriage will not stay the marriage will be broken similarly in an organization also compromise is needed and compromise is made now compromise means uh, give and take suppose there are two groups group a and group b or two individuals x and y one is giving up something and gaining something the other one is also reciprocally doing the same thing so this is one way of resolving conflicts and there are occasions when people try to somebody tries to dominate 
and if the domination is matched by the other group also the other group is equally powerful and assertive i think no way it will be solved so under such circumstances compromise is arrived at maybe by mutual agreement or through some third party intervention when such a thing happens what is happening is nobody really feels that he has won both will get something but both will be more conscious that they have lost something so compromise does not give satisfaction to either of the groups or the either of the individuals so therefore this is also not a very uh, prospective very welcome kind of conflict resolution now we come to mary parker follett's original idea i think these are some of the things that we generally know what is very fascinating about her contribution is that she says there is a novel way of resolving the conflicts and that novel way is integration of the interests of the contending persons or contending parties well there are people with diverse interests diverse viewpoints and all that follett says that maybe if we deeply think if we keenly examine we explore and try to see figure out it's always or at least sometimes possible to accommodate both the groups both the contending individuals both the viewpoints without anybody getting a feeling of hurt or defeat and of course this is a very difficult challenging perhaps even complex job but this is the only way in which organizational conflicts can be constructively resolved say for example just to give an example from a village life uh, maybe that there are two farmers who are planning to buy a piece of land which is being offered for sale by some individual farmer farmer x farmer y are contending farmer z wants to sell away a piece of land farmer x wants to buy it because it is next to its adjacent it abets the land owned by x but interestingly this piece of land falls adjacent abets the land of the y also maybe it is in between the land lands of x and y so both are obviously interested now both will think that by buying that piece of land their farm will become more viable they can have better uh, agricultural produce and all that both are very keen to have it i think they fight over the issue and sometimes bad blood develops and there are as you know cases where people resort to violent means to have one's own way it is something like dominance but if there is i think there are occasions when some uh, sincere uh, third parties or people or village elders or somebody will come forward and find out a solution he will talk to somebody on the other side between the two pieces of land there is one uh, interspersed land that is offered for sale but there is something uh, by the side abetting the land of x or y and if the go between can convince somebody to offer that and both will have it or can persuade both of them i think this piece of land is not really worth this and you need not fight over this so okay there are ways in which you can do this and this is the way in which you can satisfy both people or uh, make both the parties not have any unpleasantness and this is very important in organizations because organizations are uh, groups of people having some stable relations in an organization people or groups must have a uh, perfect understanding in fact the proper coordination is not merely uh, you know meeting of the minds but meeting of hearts i think a good harmony and uh, willingness to you know trust other person are very important and this kind of conflict resolution is recommended by mary parker follett now we come to next important contribution of uh, uh, follett it's about power authority and control now generally authority is viewed as the command of the superior authority comes because of some coercive power in the individual what sir uh, follett's interesting idea is that she talks about functional authority 
she says authority may come from authorization or maybe because of some formal arrangement in which somebody is given the power through statute or through some organizational arrangement but there is another kind of authority which she talks about this is a functional authority authority of expertise now there are some people they may not be elders they may not be the superiors they, are, they may not be the bosses but their word is taken for uh, on its face value because the advice is coming from somebody who is deeply knowledgeable who has functional expertise Paulet is recommending this kind of authority i think any authorities authority is generally used as a synonym for officials people in power having organizational positions hierarchic positions i think the message here for the administrators is that you should not always rely and you should to the extent possible rely upon the functional authority or authority of expertise increase your knowledge increase your understanding insight into the problem i think you will be respected and your authority can be followed by subordinates even without invoking any coercive power of uh, a threat of uh, you know punishment or fine or uh, maybe dismissal or things like that will not be of use and you can conduct the administrative affairs smoothly uh, we have seen two important ideas of uh, mary parker follett namely the concept of constructive conflict and the concept of functional authority yet other important contribution of follett is uh, her contribution to the concept of technique of coordination uh, for the benefit of you let me just mention that coordination is one of the major principles of organization coordination is one of the major functions of administrator and coordination is very very important in the organization in fact uh, the human body which has a perfect coordination between various systems and subsystems of the human uh, personality uh, is uh, far more effective than all other living beings and this is largely because of the faculty of coordination so therefore in an organization also uh, coordination is absolutely important and follett talks about three important uh, points about coordination one of them is uh, reciprocal coordination no coordination of this kind uh, presupposes that uh, both the parties are different parties are different individuals should be having the idea of coordination in the mind and each will be willing to coordinate with others now this is something like a uh, exercise of lateral authority generally authority i think this is somewhat connected to the earlier concept of authority authority is always seen as a kind of vertical you know relationship between individuals but here what follett is talking is about the the lateral kind of authority now the authority or uh, interrelation of things uh, through coordination and uh, through reciprocity 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 is give and take i think you uh, try to coordinate uh, with my work i think i have done something and you are trying to adjust yourself to my work or my requirement my compulsions and uh, if you are doing i'll human nature is that i will also start doing reciprocate it so if you are good to me i'll be good to you so this is one important uh, you know idea about coordination the second major idea about uh, coordination is a coordination by direct contact the problem mostly in public organizations is that organizations are very huge there are hundreds and thousands and even lakhs of people working uh, for one organization and uh, there is seldom possibility of everybody knowing the other person so this brings in impersonality and uh, uh, wooden headedness and all that i think the personal touch will be missing what follett says is that coordination is better achieved if there is personal touch between two persons so the principle of direct contact says that you directly contract the person who has a problem the person who is not able to adjust with the worker pace of somebody else i think speaking to the person directly will allow you to get the things first hand and resolve the problems imaginatively now the third important idea about coordination is uh, coordination at early stage now sometimes uh, uh, you 
allow things to go too far and uh, then you bother that something has gone wrong and it will be a lot of irreparable damage would have been already done and back tracing and going back to the location of the problem may be very tedious and sometimes it's impossible also. So therefore what's recommended is that coordination at early stage means just check for any uh, you know symptoms or signals of lack of coordination, uh, conflicting situations and uh, uh, lack of synchronization and if such things do happen you pay early attention and therefore coordination will be well achieved. So this is something about the coordination. Follett's uh, fourth uh, major idea is about uh, leadership. Leadership uh, is a very very important concept and phenomena. I think uh, the nations or the organizations, both business and public, the governmental organizations, the basic problem in most of them is lack of leadership. If there is a good leader in the organization, I think the organization will move forward. I think we have somewhere uh, while talking about administrative theory or discussing, coming to know about administrative theory, we would have discussed about Henry Fayal, uh, who has made a big change in the organization which was in deep losses he made it most profitable organization so change of one person can mean lot of things for the organization therefore organization's leadership is of vital importance some of the very important ideas of Follett are number one what is a leader leader is one who energizes others i think in the presence of the leader or in the company of the leader or under the tutelage of the leader the followers tend to get a feeling that they are one inch taller than what they are. They get a feeling that they are big people. I think uh, some kind of uh, the, the magnificence, magnificence in the personality of the leader uh, gets reflected in the subordinates also. Subordinate becomes very confident and uh, he will be asserting and he will be performing his functions well. So, Leadership is basically energizing the subordinates or associates. The second important aspect of leadership uh, according to Follett is leaders should develop initiative. Now initiative is uh, the ability to take, uh, to move forward first. People with initiative are those who do the first things, taking the first step. Now, all others are hesitating. Maybe people are dilly dallying whether to go forward or go backward. But there is one guy who comes forward and says that I'll take the lead, I'll go forward. So initiating initiative is uh, taking the first step. Initiative is finding solutions where others are not able to find. So initiative is very important and this is one of the major problems in public administration. Now one of the criticisms against Max Weber's model of ideal type of bureaucracy is that bureaucracy is something because of its rule mindedness, goal mindedness. What really happens is that the initiative of the individuals is killed. Now this, this is also sapped, initiative is also sapped by the concept of hierarchy. You have to follow what the dictates of the superior. Uh, okay, therefore initiative is missing and uh, therefore uh, Follett is saying that second important function of leader is to develop initiative among subordinates. Maybe by giving more freedom, by having a liberal look at what they do and also encouraging them, correcting them and infusing confidence perhaps are ways in which the initiative of the subordinates can be increased. As we have seen uh, the functions of leader according to Mary Parker Follett are energization and development of initiative. The third important thing that a leader should do as far as followers are concerned is to draw the best from each individual. No leader's job is uh, to get optimum or maximum from each individual under his charge. There are ever so many situations that people are idling, they are not doing their best and they are gossiping, they are doing things uh, at a slow pace, they are soldering and these are all various problems that are there in administration and more particularly in public administration. Uh, public administration because uh, the private uh, work is somebody's work whereas government work is nobody's work, everybody's work is nobody's work. So therefore these are the problems and therefore leader has to do these three things. Now coming to uh, the coordination principle once again uh, which uh, Mary Parker Follett talks of. Uh, and uh, she says leadership's job is basically threefold. 
these are the three functions but additionally she is also talking about three other things one job of leader is ensuring coordination in the organization secondly the leader has to define the purposes or objectives for which the organization is in existence define the purpose now it appears as if uh, you know uh, is it necessary for one leader to come forward and say what is the definition or what is the purpose of the organization everybody knows but uh, frankly speaking there are ever so many people working in organization they are not really aware of the central purposes reason perhaps is that they were never stated so categorically and clearly of course these days uh, there is uh, i think we are talking about concepts of strategic management uh, which uh, is uh, invoking which is uh, requiring the managers and administrators to develop a vision statement and mission statement and these are the reflections of the purposes i think this is the job that the leader has to do define the purposes of the organization ensure coordination and thirdly they have to anticipate also uh, a leader should be a visionary a leader should uh, foresee what's going to happen in the uh, years or times to come it's not that uh, he he looks for organization to move slide from one stage to another but he should uh, be uh, keenly thinking as to what's going to happen whether the organization will be stable or uh, will it uh, face some big challenges or uh, are there any opportunities in the horizon or there any big opportunities to expand and consolidate or to move forward and to do something excellent so these are all the things uh, the leader has to do so the leader has to be a coordinator uh, he has to be a giver of the purpose and finally he should be a great anticipator he should have the ability i think this is the sense of planning the sense of anticipation is very important and uh, because of this ability of anticipation leader will make all preparations for future contingencies well these are some of the major ideas of uh, mary parker follett we come to the last uh, the last uh, leg of the lecture or presentation uh, we'll have a little critical appreciation of uh, mary parker follett let me just mention that uh, critical appreciation does not mean finding fault with somebody's contribution critical appreciation literally means it is trying to know both the good and bad of it now coming to the positive side i think one thing that was already mentioned is that she is perhaps the lone uh, female uh, making a contribution to administrative theory and management theory and some people say that in addition to her there is also lillian gilbert and uh, who has made some contribution to uh, time and motion studies and all but uh, in comparison to follett i think uh, gilbert's uh, uh, lillian gilbert's contributions are not uh, they, they pale into insignificance uh, we say that uh, uh, henry fayol is the father of management but uh, somebody interestingly raised the argument who is the mother then now the mother of management some people say is uh, mary parker follett mary parker's uh, forlitt's uh, major contribution is i think uh, she has been a kind of bridge between the classical theory and the neoclassical or behavioral theory now she is uh, it's very difficult to parcel her uh, neatly into one theory i think she she had a very creative way of uh, you know articulating standpoints and uh, issues and phenomena in organization and uh, her contributions touch up on both classical and uh, neoclassical or behavioral schools of thought uh, her one more important uh, positive point of follett is uh, uh, she has uh, located her theory in the context of democracy she has won uh, she has uh, philosophized about the democratic administration how democratic administration should be i think as in the uh, the concept of leadership or coordination we have seen our major ideas where the onus is on the leader in whichever situation the leader or the ruler uh, does more than the ruled i think that's a democratic way democratic essence is that the leader should work more than the followers so she is uh, uh, cutting out some uh, carving out some roles for leaders uh, which are very innovative and fascinating and which put the onus on the leaders uh therefore our ideas are very novel and refreshing another uh, major point that needs to be uh, seen 
uh, about her contributions is uh, she is a forerunner to a new type of uh, organization known as matrix organization or the project kind of organization. Earlier uh, we were uh, familiar uh, from the writings of uh, administration and management thinkers about two types of organizations, vertical organization and flat organization. She talks about a third kind of organization and uh, this is a matrix organization. Uh, Motorola company has uh, tremendously profited from this kind of organization. She is also a contribution. Now, she also talks about the last thing that is uh, in the society, in the public sector particularly, there is uh, turmoil and conflict. I think there are many countries, India perhaps is fortunate to have a stable and peaceful democracy, but everywhere there is turmoil and uh, there are conflicts and all that. The ideas of polit can be expanded uh, to cover uh, the, the, the statecraft or major issues of society and uh, governance and all that. I think uh, what she is talking about, uh, the constructive conflict resolution is applicable to uh, to wider areas and therefore our contribution has to be viewed as something very fascinating now only perhaps one criticism uh, that you will have is that she cannot be parceled into uh, one particular uh, theory of management or administration well friends i think uh, we have uh, covered uh, the contributions of Mary Parker Follett. Let me just recapitulate what has been said. Mary Parker Follett uh, is a very fascinating writer, perhaps the lone major thinker of administration and management. Her ideas are very novel. She has uh, democratized administration and uh, she has uh, given uh, very fascinating ideas about uh, dem how to run administration democratically. So therefore, her ideas are, uh, you know, relevant uh, for uh, so many organizations, both business, government and service sector organizations. Thank you.